well, I did it. I decided to upgrade the quick change tool post. I haven't had this long, just a couple months. Uh, but the original, the first one I bought was like 30 bucks. It's all aluminum and it is, it is just not substantial. This thing is small, which I think is okay. I, I'm not sure, but I believe this is B O X A size. Um, it's, oops, there we go. Uh, it is an inch and three quarter wide from face to face. And the base is inch and a half. Um, this is a piston style, which is also not, the design of this is, is simple, but it's, you know, it's got a off, offset cam. And when you turn this thing, it pushes on the pistons in order to engage them against your tool holder. Well, on occasion, you can kind of see a nick there. This thing will bind in the lathe, probably because of my technique. But regardless, when it happens, it'll just, it, this whole thing will kind of shift. This is softer material. I know it's aluminum, but it, it, uh, it just isn't as solid. So I wanted something that's going to hold up, uh, better than, than this small aluminum, uh, tool holder. Um, so I've been researching. I wasn't sure what to get. I still don't know if this was the right direction to go. Um, but I decided I'm going to try it anyway. And I went with an AXA style tool holder. It's, as you can see, it's much more substantial in size. Um, it is about three inches, two and a half inches wide. Um, get that out of the way. So it is about two and a half inches wide from end to end. Let me take this off. I'm going to have to do some customization to get this mounted onto the lathe, which I expected. That's not a problem. Um, as you can see, this, this bolt is far more, uh, it's a different thread, it's bigger, um, which is fine. Um, but I got two, two issues that I need to deal with. Um, let me show you the size first and then we'll, we'll get to that. There's, it comes with a T-nut. So if you're looking, there's a lot of lathes will be able to mount using this. Well, that's not how this mini lathe is. It's got a raised boss where this has to rest over. And as you see, as you can see, the inner uh, sleeve here will prevent that from happening. So I, I gotta do some looking and see what I can do. But for now, the, the size of this overall dimensions, if you're curious, is two and a half inches. Um, I mean, you can find this stuff online, two and a quarter inches tall, unless you add the, the portion that locks, then it's three inches. Um, so this is a Bostar, they're all made in China, at least these, there's some expensive US made ones, but um, you can see, oh, the other upgrade was a wedge style. Um, I've been reading, these are a lot better at locking in your tool holder. Um, the other thing is it's steel. It's very substantial. It's, uh, I'm really hoping this is far more rigid. It's, it's the same size dimensions as the original one that came with the lathe. Um, so I thought, you know, I'm just going to go with this and I'll modify it as needed and see how we can make this work things you want to keep in to consideration are, are tool lathe center height. There, there's charts and things out there that tell you how to pick the right size. And this is in between. You can go with an OXA or an AXA for these small mini lathes. And I decided bigger might be better <clears throat> in order to be more substantial for the issues I was running into. And I wanted to go with steel. So this is what I got. I think what I'm going to do is take this thing apart, clean it up first, and then uh, then we'll go from there. But I do need to modify the bottom in order to get it to fit onto the tool post, the compound. See this? 
So it's got to go over this. I don't really want to modify the compound at all. Um, <clears throat> so my thoughts are, and this may change as I work through this video, but my thoughts are to modify the tool hold post itself, which I don't have a problem doing. And perhaps if I can get this out, it's probably a press fit, but if I could get that out or maybe drill it out, I'll, I'll check the dimensions. And just, I just need, you know what, a quarter inch or so milled off of this or, or shaved off of that in order to get this to sit down over that boss. So that's that's the first hurdle, one way or another. That or, or create a spacer, not sure what to do yet. The other thing, I can either find some more material and maybe I'll try threading and see if I can't make a new uh, bolt to hold that down. Or, you know, I've got this bolt, which is the right thread. It's just, it's too much slop. Maybe I, maybe I create a sleeve using the lathe. So I'm not sure which direction I'm gonna go yet. Um, it's gonna test, you know, some of my abilities, but that's, that's what we're gonna do. So that's the start of this video. We're gonna keep, uh, working towards this, but the goal is to get this mounted up there and hopefully we get a lot more rigid, rigidity. First thing we'll do is just uh, get this thing taken apart, kind of clean it up, see what makes it tick, and just see what components come apart and what components don't come apart. Um, if you tighten this up all the way, or loosen it up, I guess, left, it, there is a stop and your wedges don't come out but these are two different wedges I think when they come out you got to kind of get them put back in in the right order but what we're gonna do is take these apart again if you're looking for details on one of these AXA size tool holders wedge style um, this happens to be Bostar brand uh, I think most of them are pretty similar um, here's what the bottom looks like sometimes it's difficult to find pictures and photos of that. Um, let's go ahead and measure that for you too. Looks like three quarters of an inch undersized, just just shy, is the opening of the steeled, the steel portion. And then of course your bushing or I believe it's this piece, um, this inner piece. Its bore is just over half an inch seven eighths yeah five eighths sorry about five eighths um but anyway uh let's get this thing apart um again you've got the, the hole for the handle you've got your through bolt this is the one that comes with um and then you have, you know, it's kind of, a, I really like this design better than this aluminum one I've been using. Um, I had to loosen the whole nut at the top every time I wanted to change a tool holder. And I, I don't know, I'm looking forward to using this. Uh, I'm going to make it work one way or another. Uh, but let's get this thing apart. That's it. I don't know if they're if if they need to go back in the same slot or not. There's some grease in there. Um, I'm gonna try to keep them left and right for my angle. So I'm gonna just so I put them back where they came out of. So they they grease it up fairly well. That's how it came. There's some machinings some grit in there, but we'll get that cleaned out. And then here's the, the other side. Again, we'll get that grease spread around there a little bit better than that. Not too bad. I wonder, I'll bet this needs to screw out of there. So I may have to figure out some sort of tooling for that. I may have just the tool. I'll be right back. Welcome back. 
I think uh, this is really close, but uh, I was hoping it would fit perfectly. But it did work. Um, so if you haven't seen Hand Tool Rescue, go check out his channel. Um, but, uh, yes, this top piece does unthread uh, from this. So I actually did have to put it in the vise to get it to, to come loose, but this is this almost fits. It's so close. I, I wish that fit. That would have been cool. But anyway, it did work. So you can get that unthreaded out of there. A little, a little rough. It definitely needs cleaned up. But as you can see, that's coming out of there pretty nicely. Let's see if we can't do it by hand. Using this, I did put that handle on myself. I'm kind of proud of it. it. Looked turned out pretty nice. I used uh, tongue oil as the finish on that, but you know, there's a serial number for all of the handles he makes underneath uh, your scales, and then I uh, put these pins in and epoxy it all together. Turned out pretty good. I did not harden this though. Um, he does recommend you harden these things. I was just wanting to mess around with it, see if I could make a handle. Turned out all right. Come on out of there. There we go. All right. Well, not sure about that then. So this, we'll have to figure this out. I really don't want to cut quarter inch off those threads again the idea was going to be I, I probably could get away with it I still might do it but again I need well a little less than a quarter inch I'd only cut off what I need um, but anyway I need to go around this shoulder so it's not a quarter inch so I would only do what I need to do um, but again if I cut off a quarter inch of that down you know you're looking at half your threads that's not ideal so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do there yet we'll keep playing with this thing um, okay I got that out let's pull this guy out of there greased up pretty well I am gonna clean this up this is I don't know. It's, I mean, it, it's greased. It's nice to see it greased very well. Oh, I see. There's like a, kind of like a piece of rope for a gasket. Anyway, it does have some, some weird stuff in there that I think we could get cleaned up. And I'll re-grease it, put it back together. But anyway, that's it. There's not much more to it. Um, now, fortunately, well, let's see before I get too, too excited here. All right, so the idea will be to take this thing over here, see if that fits over, and it does. A little bit of play, but once you tighten that down, that could work um, and there's still you can still see there's threads in there that I think I think could work I'm gonna ponder this for a while before I just go hacking that off but that's kind of the direction I'm going um, I do like that that sits on there though um, that should be much more substantial than, than that little aluminum one was um, Okay, well, at least I don't have to drill out the actual tool holder. That that hole does work. So I could either do that or I could just stop there and somehow create another spacer because that's how they had it. But I think this T-nut was designed to go like underneath a, a T-slot. Well, I don't, I don't have anything like that. This can't go underneath there. 
It's just not how it works. So I don't think I'm gonna be able to use this unless I cut a recess in that. But that's gonna raise the overall height of the tool holder another one half inch, something like that. Hmm. I keep thinking about it, but you know, it's not like this thing cost me a fortune. I may I may cut that or I don't know. I suppose that's a part that I should be able to machine in theory, right? Maybe I'll make a part and I'll have the bore the way I need it. I don't know. I'll do some thinking. Maybe I'll maybe the, maybe I'll make another one of these that can fit this bolt. So the diameter of the bore will be different. I'll set you down. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'll make another one of these. The diameter of the bore will be different. This this diameter will remain the same. This thread will need to be recreated, but all the dimensions and everything I need are here. I just need to have a different bore. And I do have stock that I can use. Let's see. Doesn't quite have the the face that I'd like, but it does have the height. Let's check. Let's get out the new uh, the new calipers. I decided I'm just going to keep it. Let's check some dimensions here. I don't think that that piece is going to work, but let's check. This would work. We're at 984 thou, 986 thou. This is bigger than that, I'll bet. Yeah, 960. So this would be really close, but uh, it doesn't have the head on it that I want to recreate. And the reason that that one, so that's an inch, 361 thou. I want to be able to recess back into back into here so but I do have some other material what else do we have over here there's one how are we looking here well still not quite big enough for the head I need to find some bigger material. But I got something though. So, yeah, it's not inch and a half. But it's close. So I need to find some inch and a half material. I may have it though. Um, what's this rough stock look like? And it's still not inch and a half, it's inch and a quarter. So I need to find some inch and a half material. And maybe I'll order some. Um, but I think if I could recreate, if I could recreate this piece, which I think I can, that'd be my first true functional improvement. And then I could make these threads. I, I won't have to touch any of the original parts that came with it. I could make these threads, you know, half the depth so that I can sit over the boss and uh, still get that threaded in. And I think for the things that I'll be doing, even though it won't have quite as much threads in there like I'd like, I, th I think it would, once you tighten it all down, I think it would be, it'd be fine. You know, I'd end up using that. Um, 
put a lock washer on there. Cut this down the length. Might work. Okay. Let me uh, do some looking for some materials. Get set up and see how I'm going to do this. I'll bring you back. Well, I've been thinking about this. And I think I'm going to, at first, go with the pass the path of least destruction. Um, I don't really want to damage, I don't want to uh, modify the original parts and pieces that came with it. Um, I still think I'm going to either try to make or find a bushing to go in there to cut out the slop of that. But for now, I think what I'm trying to accomplish might work just to, just to get this thing in there and test. And here's my idea. I'm going to put some spacers in here. Bring you over. So we've got these washers. So I've got this. The idea is to mount this on here. Just like this. So I'm not, I'm not modifying anything at the moment. And then put a couple spacers in here. These washers are going to be perfect. I just need to drill them out to match the diameter of this. Uh, let's one 300 and an inch well that's the top inch 300 thou anyway um so we get these drilled out and then this can fit down in here and i'll screw that down to where those spaces so you don't want this tight against this or this won't be able to spin but you do want to cut some of that slop out so i'm going to put some spacers under there and then the idea is to find some some sleeves or bushings and I'll screw this in here to hold the whole thing down. And that way I can test this thing without actually cutting or modifying anything. I think it's gonna hold up just fine. Um, I just don't want, if I can avoid it, I really don't wanna modify anything, especially the, the actual comp compound. I don't know how easy it would be to get replacement parts for this. I'd just have to buy a whole new one. But these things are all over the internet, so. I'm not too worried about modifying this thing, but if I don't have to, I don't want to. So that's going to be my direction for now. That's that's the least destructive thing I can do. Um, put some washers in there. Put this bulb in here. Um, I'll cut it down to length. And and let's use it. That way we, we can see how well this thing works versus that aluminum one. So I'll bring you back. So here's the idea. We're going to machine two or three of these. This one's too big. Don't want that one. Um, we're going to not machine them, but we're just going to drill a hole. What we're looking for is something that will slip over the out, the outside of this. Um, so we're looking at 985 thou. Close enough. 985 thou. But I want to go bigger than that. Um, obviously, I don't want to go 9... Oh, that's way, I'm not going to go that big. Um, so there's there's room to play. This doesn't have to be precision tight fit. Um, so what, what I'm going to use is a step bit. And we want about 985 thou, the closest thing to it. And right there we have 9, 990 thou, 995 thou, somewhere in there. That's going to be perfect. Um, so what I'm going to do is just mark that that step with a marker just to give me a visual it's this guy here as I'm working with it and that way as it's spinning around I can tell which one I'm coming down to let's double check that So that, that one's going to be perfect for what we're doing. And so the idea is we're just going to drill. We're going to step through these in order to get that down to the thickness we want for this piece. To That way we got some shims to space it up. All right, I'm going to get you set up on the drill press, and then we'll, we'll get these holes drilled. I'm changing it up. Uh, the drill press, the problem was the 
once I got down to where I needed to be, the top edge would hit the vise. I don't want to damage that. So I'm just going to do this freehand. Again, this isn't precision or anything. This is just uh, spacers. It's going to be just fine. Let's get these drilled out. Well, I got those drilled out. I had to switch it up and use the drill because the drill press just wasn't working out. It's not quite the ideal setup, but this worked. Um, so here's the idea. I got a couple spacers. This is prototype stuff. Like I'll clean these up later, but I just wanna see if this will work. So I got a couple spacers. That may be too much. I may only need one, I'm not sure, but that's the idea. Um, I got them chewed up. I need to file them down a little bit. But uh, the idea is to get this mounted over in the the compound and and see what happens i'll take you over there I got these filed down good enough. So here's the idea. I'm going to just put these on here. Just for now. Slide this down. We'll get that screwed in. I think I might only need one for what I'm doing. Let's take that off. Yeah, because I don't need that to be super tight. I just need, I just need some of that space taken out of that. Let's get rid of one of those. Put this one in there.
Well, it shouldn't matter. But well, let's get this on there. See how we do. Need a better screwdriver, that's for sure. But for now, this will do. Let's see what this does. So it's pushing up because this isn't down all the way. Okay, I got it. This is, I don't want to do that. That just needs, okay. All right, maybe I do need the two spacers. I think I do. All right, I'm figuring this out. So what, what this is, you don't, because of the way I'm doing this, I don't want to tighten this all the way down because there's no stop at the bottom. Um, what's really going to hold it is the top nut when I get that screwed on. The spacer is just that, it's a spacer. Um, let's get that back in there. I'm not going to tighten that all the way down. I don't want to raise this at all. I just want to get this snugged up, but it's too snug there. Because I want this to spin independently. Yeah, it's a little finicky. Maybe I'll go back to one for now. Again, this is just kind of to see how things work. Tighten that down until, again, I don't want to raise raise this tool holder at all. I do want that to seat down in there better. Let me try that other one. So we're just gonna bring that down until, until it touches the boss. Yeah, see now it's starting to raise it up. Somewhere right there. And then the idea would be to screw that on. I don't have any spacers for that, but let's see if I can find something. All right, here's a Franken tool post. I just, just wanted to get this kind of mocked up, see what I needed to do, how it's going to work. I do still have some fine tuning to do with my top slide, but what I'm going to do is just do some tests. test cuts with this and see if it feels more stable than that aluminum one.
whatever this material is, it's total crap. It just gums up. But it was, it was a, like a free tool that came with some quick setup, I don't know, dresser or something. So it, it's not expected to be worth much, but uh, I just wanted something to cut with this new tool holder. It does seem pretty, pretty stable. Obviously, this is not pretty. This is not how I want it to be. But I do like that, you know, I can, you know, quick change, mount it down, and be able to get this where I need it to be. Um, now, my the way that I have mine ground, it's, it's really not ideal. I need to work on my personal grinding, but uh, I would like to try, put that there like that some better material in here and see how that turns. Uh, by better, I mean some steel or some of the other scrap that I have, but this, this just gums up so bad. It's just, it's rough, it's terrible. Let's see what we got over here. Um, there's some steel bar up there. See what this does. It needs cleaned up. I don't know if you can see that. It's just some steel rod. Uh, since I have a lathe that has a decent sized through bore, I don't know. Let's see. Let's see how far, what we can do here with this. Initially, I'm just looking to clean up the edge, the, the mushroomed end, and to see, see if I can't get that cleaned up. We'll see what that does with my high-speed steel and, and this new tool holder. I'm going to end the video here and I wasn't sure how I was going to proceed with this uh, video series or if it would be a series, but uh, it appears, you know, I can't, I can't really get this thing mounted and use it properly without some modifications. Um, so I'm going to end, I'm going to call that part one and I'm going to proceed on with a series on mounting this uh, quick change tool post. Um, so. I've got some upcoming videos kind of explain what I'll be doing, uh, but I wanted to throw in a clip here just summarizing and, and closing out that part one series. Uh, we'll see you on the next video.